Hello everyone, my name is Faith and I wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks that I found personally that I use that help me in any kind of situation be more comfortable and thereby be more confident whenever I'm in a room or type of encounter or situation where I'm communicating verbally or non-verbally. So this first video is going to focus on nonverbals and things that you can do to feel a little bit more comfortable in the space that you're in, okay? So first things first, uh, or rule number one, is that you have to be physically comfortable where you are located and in order to be comfortable. We, you know, we want to feel physically comfortable, right? Whether that be our clothing, um, how we, what shoes we're wearing, how our hair is, uh, we, even as to routine of what we've done that morning. Did we eat a proper breakfast, ABC? That can all go hand in hand with being comfortable within your day and environment, especially when you're walking into environments that you don't necessarily know what's going to happen. So if you have a job interview or something, and you don't know what the room is going to look like. There's things that you can do where if you can't control what that room is going to look like, at least you control within yourself what makes you feel most comfortable. So when you feel comfortable physically, it tricks your uh, brain and then your mind becomes psychologically comfortable. And so when we are physically comfortable, we are thereby tricking our minds to become psychologically comfortable. And so when we get in this, um, I don't, when we get in the routine of practicing being comfortable physically, it'll start to become our default and it'll start to become psychological. So it's like, oh, I'm good. I'm comfortable in this, you know, situation. So that's a little tip or trick for you. And so I guess the first part A that would go with no, rule number one of being comfortable is that it's a whole change of mindset, right? So you have to think about, you can't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm not in charge of my day, you know, what, who, someone else is, if you're not in charge of your day, I guarantee you someone else is going to take charge of it for you. If you're not in charge of your time, someone else is going to take charge of it for you. So it is a mindset change. You have to be adaptable and mutable to these changing environments and not necessarily uh, fear them or be nervous of them, but say, okay, well, at least I can control myself and I know what makes me feel better and me comfortable on the inside. And thus I'm going to apply all of that before I even enter a room. And although this is just video one, there's so many different uh, tips and tricks and little things that we can do, whether it be using the tonality of our voice, how we open our sentences, because when you have a first impression with someone, really, people say first 10 seconds, I kind of say first five to 10 seconds um, is is kind of the, the crucial part of when you first meet someone because uh, it's all body language. So the content that you say doesn't really matter uh, as long as you are giving out like the proper body language. So here's another little tip. Confident people and studies have, have shown this, confident people tend to take up more space, right? So although you can't really see, you know, my, my whole body right now or my torso, but my, to my, my arms are not crossed like this. Okay. And I'm not talking to you guys like that. My head is not down talking to you guys. Okay. So you'll see confident people will sit at their space and own their space and take up their space. They won't like crouch down like, oh, I shouldn't be here. But also from being like human, um, the the very first thing that we look at are someone's hands. So we want to know if they're, they have a weapon of some sort, if they're safe. And so that's another little side note of always keep your hands somewhat visible. Don't keep them in your pockets or twiddling in your pockets because that can be very distracting. And it can also give off an impression that you might be, you know, nervous or unprepared of some sort. So just bear that in mind. It's always good to see someone's hands. But back to confidence, you can see my neck clearly and I'm not crossing my 
arms so you can see my torso. So you can see all of my vulnerable areas. So competent people will typically, you'll see, they stand with their heads tall. You can see their necks. You can see this is the jugular. So if I was talking to you like this, I'd be, co I'd be covering a vulnerability of mine. If I'd be crossing my arms, I'd be covering a vulnerability of mine. So although crossing your arms can sometimes just be comfortable as it is, one trick that you can do is start putting your hands behind your back and it also helps with your posture. Or uh, if you don't know what to do with your hands at the table, try putting them in like a steeple, a little steeple position like that. That's just a trick. If it resonates, take it. If it doesn't, don't take it. But the very core of this first lesson, so to speak, is in order to be comfortable in a room, you have to be comfortable physically and thus you have to be comfortable psychologically. And once you master that and you understand, okay, this makes me comfortable, this makes me uncomfortable, and you know, maybe take a T-chart and write down this uh, the difference. And you're gonna find that you become more confident and comfortable in yourself the more that you figure your own self out. So rule number one, get comfortable physically, get comfortable psychologically. Part B of that or part A of that is to change your mindset and find those things that make you comfortable and see what little ticks that you use. Do you cross your arms a lot? Do you have your hands fidgeting in your pockets a lot? Where are your eyes? Are you preparing before you go into a specific situation of how you can be comfortable? And with that said, check out thinkers.com for more information.